students welcome to allen digital classes so today we are going to learn about a concept under excretory products and elimination chapter and the topic name is mechanism of concentration of filtrate and in that that is counter current mechanism so why this particular mechanism occurs in animal so whether this mechanism occurs in all the animals no especially in mammals we can observe this particular the process so mammals have the ability to produce concentrated urine in order to produce concentrated urine this counter current mechanism is play a role so in order to produce that concentrated urine no so the two important structure of the nephron play a role what are those structures one is henle's loop and another one is vasa recta so we know that in the nephron different parts are there first one it is renal carpuscles and the renal tubules renal carpuscles consist of the bowman's capsule as well as the glomerulus whereas the renal tubules it includes yes that is proximal convoluted tubule henle's loop as well as the the distal convoluted tubule so here henle's loop of the nephron and the blood capillaries surrounding that henle's loop which is called as the vasa recta vasa recta is nothing but it is a blood capillaries which surrounds the henle's loop these two play a very significant role in counter current mechanism in order to form concentrated urine so in order to form concentrated urine these two structure play a important or a significant role so let us understand the meaning of the term counter current what is counter current if you observe here the flow of the filtrate in the henle loop it occurs in in the descending loop of the henle so the flow of the filtrate occurs in a downward direction and in the ascending limb as the name suggests the flow of the filtrate occurs in upward direction and if you observe the blood capillary which surrounds the henle loop this blood capillary it is the vasa recta in vasa recta also in the descending loop of the vasa recta the flow of blood occurs in the downward direction whereas in case of ascending limb of the vasa recta the flow of blood occurs in the upward direction so here if you see the flow of the filtrate within the henle loop as well as the flow of blood within the vasa recta occurs in opposite direction and this is termed as yes that is counter current counter current meaning the flow of filtrate or the blood within the henle loop as well as the vasa recta occurs in opposite way that forms the the counter current and why this type of the the movement occurs what is the significant of this so in order to form the concentrated urine much of the water molecule from the filtrate it should be reabsorbed so water molecule should be reabsorbed for that the gradient is gradient is required and to maintain that particular gradient this counter current mechanism play a significant role and one more important aspect here is within the kidney we can observe the two regions and those two regions are outer cortex and inner medulla region outer cortex and inner medullary region and if you observe the the osmolarity osmolarity in the sense the amount of the the solute present in the interstitial cells of the cortex as well as in the medulla if we observe the concentration of the solutes within the cortex it is very less that's why here we can observe just 300 milli osmomolar per liter which is the unit for osmolarity and if we move from cortex to the inner medullary region so if you observe here the concentration of the solute it increases as the solute concentration increases so the osmolarity also increases so from cortex to the inner medulla the osmolarity increases from 300 to 1200 
so this much concentration it is required in the medullary region why in the medullary region this much concentration is required the reason behind this is the henle's loop and vasa recta are mainly extended in the medullary region yes in the medullary region only vasa recta as well as henle loop are mainly present so in order to reabsorb water molecule from the filtrate this much concentration of the osmolarity it is maintained so how this particular osmolarity is maintained for that the two important the substances are mainly required and those are so this gradient that is 300 to 1200 milli osmo molar per liter this gradient it is mainly maintained by sodium chloride as well as urea very important one sodium chloride as well as urea these two substances are mainly involved in maintaining the gradient as i mentioned why this gradient is required yes in order to reabsorb water molecule from the filtrate in order to form concentrated urine the main purpose of counter current mechanism is to form the concentrated urine so for that much of the water molecule should be reabsorbed so simply the water molecules it won't be reabsorbed from the filtrate no so for that the gradient is created and that gradient is mainly caused by the sodium chloride as well as the urea so let us see how the sodium chloride as well as this urea movement takes place within the the nephron and how it is able to maintain this concentration gradient so first one is so in the ascending and the descending loop of the henle so the movement of the the molecule it is very significant especially the ascending limb of the henle loop it is permeable to salt molecules whereas it is impermeable to water molecule so the sodium chloride is transported by the ascending limb of the henle loop it is exchanged with the vasa recta here you can see this the movement of the sodium chloride from the ascending limb to the vasa recta here you can see now sodium chloride is present in the filtrate of the ascending limb and that sodium chloride it is enters into the descending loop of the vasa recta as the movement of the salt occurs so within the filtrate if you see the concentration it becomes more of the dilute because sodium chloride is removed so it becomes more of hypotonic whereas in case of the blood yes you are right in because of the entry of the sodium chloride the concentration of sodium chloride is increased so it becomes more concentrated so now in the blood because of the nacl so the concentration it is increased so this is the movement of the sodium chloride between the ascending limb of the henle loop as well as descending loop of the vasa recta this is the one movement okay and now what happens is now because of this particular the movement the nacl so from this descending loop of the vasa recta it again enters into the interstitium but that different side that is near the descending limb so near the descending limb what happens is from the ascending limb the nacl it is entered into the descending loop of the vasa recta and that nacl when it uh, enters into the ascending loop of the vasa recta near the descending limb there the nacl enters into the interstitium okay so nacl it is returned again to the interstitium similarly that is one sodium chloride and one more uh, molecule is also help in maintaining the gradient and that is urea small amount of so may think that urea is a nitrogen based material it has to be excreted from the body so why this urea it is again it is reabsorbed so here the point small amount of urea is required to maintain the osmolarity yes small amount of the urea is retained by the kidney in order to maintain this osmolarity because the main purpose is it has to form concentrated urine so small amount of the urea enters the thin segment of the ascending loop it is transported back to the interstitium by the collecting duct 
so at the collecting duct what happens so the urea molecules are mainly reabsorbed into the interstitium and then this above descending transport of the substances mainly facilitated by the special arrangement of this henle's loop and vasa recta because of the special arrangement of these henle's loop and vasa recta this type of the movement it is mainly possible in order to form the concentrated urine and in order to maintain high concentration gradient now we just absorb so as we discussed now the sodium chloride is there in the descending limb of the vasa recta and that sodium chloride it is transported by the blood and now that nacl enters into the yes ascending loop of the vasa recta so now sodium chloride is there in the ascending limb of the vasa recta from there the nacl enters into the interstitium because there is a, a difference in the gradient high is there in the blood low is there in the interstitium so from high to the lower concentration the movement of sodium chloride takes place so now nacl is there at the interstitium which is near to descending limb and one important point here is descending loop of henle is permeable to only water molecule but not the sodium chloride so sodium chloride from the interstitium it cannot enter into the descending limb but because of the sodium chloride it is high in the interstitium water molecule it is mainly reabsorbed from the descending limb so this is the reason why the descending limb it is permeable to water molecule so water it is mainly reabsorbed from the filtrate next what happens in the blood because of the movement of the nacl into the interstitium so again the blood becomes hypotonic because of the nacl movement now one more uh, substance that is urea is also play a role here so the urea from the filtrate okay so from the ascending limb that filtrate it moves into the collecting duct so here we can observe the collecting duct this is collecting duct and from this particular collecting duct urea it is mainly enters into the interstitium and why that urea is entered again to maintain osmolarity so when movement of this nacl and urea occurs in the medullary region high osmolarity is maintained so when high osmolarity is maintained much of the water molecules from the collecting duct is also reabsorbed water molecules from collecting duct also it is reabsorbed as a result the formed urine it is concentrated yes so in order to reabsorb water molecule from the filtrate the high osmolarity is maintained in the interstitium by the two important substances one it is sodium chloride and another one is small amount of urea so thus form the entire counter current mechanism in order to form concentrated urine this is the main aim of this particular mechanism so in order to form the concentrated urine so the water molecule is reabsorbed to reabsorb the water molecule high osmolarity is maintained within the medullary interstitium so this is about the the entire the counter current mechanism so as i mentioned counter current mechanism the main purpose is to form yes concentrated urine that to in mammals so now quickly we'll see so this mechanism it helps in maintaining the concentration gradient in the medullary interstitium so presence of such interstitial gradient it helps in the reabsorption of the water molecule from the the collecting duct so then whatever the urine it is formed it is of concentrated okay so now let us solve few questions related to this mechanism so the first question henle's loop were absent from mammalian nephron which of the following is to be expected so if henle's loop is absent in the mammalian nephron then which particular uh, following is to be expected if henle's loop is not there henle's loop is only mainly required for the counter current mechanism in order to form concentrated urine if that henle's loop only is not there means 
yes the reabsorption of water it won't occur so we excrete more of diluted urine so the answer it is the urine will be more of the diluted that is the fourth answer the next one the counter current mechanism operates in which part of nephron counter current mechanism operates in which part of nephron so whether it is in pct and collecting duct or between the dct and collecting duct ascending limb of henle and the descending limb the answer it is yes that is between the the loop of henle as well as the the vasa recta okay thank you all